Hello, and welcome back to Economics, this time zoomed in. That's right, I adjusted my camera angle. And thanks to Mr. Caro, who went into the school and gave me my clicker, I don't need my computer in front of me anymore. Well, this is the uh, second week of inflation, and I asked you to watch this video and look at the slides. However, there is no direct assignment that goes with what you are about to learn. Instead, it's going to be covered on the uh, quiz part one, which will be a Schoology uh, quiz, and you'll get to use your notes and any video lectures. You just don't get to use your friends, but you can take all the time that you need on that. And then there'll be an economic uh, inflation quiz part two, which is a little bit more current event and uh, writing based. So take a look at both of those, but I'll try and go quickly through the last part of inflation here. And the first topic we're going to talk about today is, is inflation always bad? And to answer that question, the answer is no, inflation is not always bad. But inflation is bad for some people. And those people include the following groups. So if you're someone who's on a fixed income, like a salary, or you get a pension from your job that you worked for 30 years, and then on retirement, it's like, okay, you're gonna get $1,000 every month, or you get an annuity, some, something kind of similar. Uh, you're hurt by inflation because, well, you retired, you got that $1,000 every month, but you know now your money can't go as far because there's inflation and there's a general increase in the level of prices of all the different goods, and now suddenly that thousand dollars doesn't get you as far, so you're hurt by inflation. A second group would be someone who has savings. So you go put your money in the bank, it doesn't accrue that much interest in the bank in the savings uh, in your savings account, and you draw it out years later. Well, that money years later isn't worth as much as it is today due to inflation. You could have bought more goods with that same amount of money today than that same amount of money in 10 years from now because, well, there's inflation. You can't buy as many goods with the same amount of cash. And a third group would be if you loaned out money. So if you're a creditor, if you're a bank, or maybe if you're just a good friend who's loaning out money, if you loan out money today and then, next, and then over the course of a year there's inflation and you're given back that money, well, the person who got the money today was able to buy more stuff than uh, you will be in one year from now because of inflation and the general increase in the level of prices. So that's who inflation is bad for. But who is inflation good for? Inflation is good for a couple different groups of people. The first group is if you borrowed money. So creditors who loaned out money are losers with inflation. But if you borrowed money, you're in the wind because, hey, you just borrowed money and the money that you're going to pay back in a year from now or 10 years from now, whenever you need to pay back this loan, isn't going to be worth as much as the money you have today. So, yay, you won. And the second group, which is kind of a, uh, an iffy group, is uh, people with variable incomes. And it's an iffy group because it's sometimes. But there are jobs out there who pay a hourly wage. And the only reason that the hourly wage goes up is that there's inflation. And so those people might make more money, uh, even though money might not go as far. But sometimes you can get a little bit on top of the inflation as well. So those are the people who are helped and, and hurt by inflation. Our second topic today is about anticipated inflation versus unanticipated inflation. So anticipated inflation is, well, anticipated. You expect it's going to happen. So it's inflation that we think is going to happen and we can prepare for it. That's the biggest thing. We can prepare for anticipated inflation because, well, we anticipate it. Unanticipated inflation, then, is the type of inflation that exceeds our expected amount. Now, follow along with me as we talk about this scenario of anticipated inflation. Let's say you borrow $100,000 from a bank to start a new business, and you promise to repay that money in one year. The amount that you borrowed, that $100,000, is called your principal loan. Okay, so you borrowed $100,000, you're going to pay back from a year from now. 
For the bank to earn money, though, off that loan, the only reason they're going to give it to you is because they're going to charge interest. That's how banks make money, right? They charge interest. And so you're going to require to be paid back the principal loan of $100,000 plus interest. Now, suppose you and the bank agree, you know what? Interest rate, 7%. So that means you pay back $107,000 in total for one year because 7% of $100,000 is $7,000. So you're going to pay back $107,000 in one year from now. Now, when you get this loan from the bank, you and the bank have to think about, okay, what's the inflation rate over the next year going to be? And let's say you and the bank come to an agreement that, you know what, inflation is going to be about 5%, meaning... It's going to cost you $105,000 next year to buy what would have cost you $100,000 this year. Following along with me so far? So if there's a principal on your loan, it's $100,000. There's an interest rate of 7%, which means you're paying back $100,000. But you expect inflation during that same time to be 5%, meaning things, prices of pretty much all goods will go up by 5%. Let's continue on a little bit. So after factoring an inflation loan, then that means that the bank really isn't making $7,000, right? They're really only making the difference between the interest rate of 7% and the inflation rate of 5%, meaning they're earning 2%, they're earning about $2,000. Because that extra $5,000 doesn't really do them anything because that's just the cost of what you would have had to pay for the same amount of stuff last year. So they really have about 2% gain. This is called the real interest rate, like what, you're re what the bank is really getting out of it. Now, it's important to note that neither you or the bank win or lose from that 5% inflation rate because, well, you expect it to happen. You anticipate that inflation rate. If the bank had expected an inflation rate of 10% instead of 5%, it probably would have charged you 12% interest instead of 7% interest because they wanted to earn 2% regardless. Okay, following along with me so far. Okay, so no one's winning or losing because of that inflation rate. The bank is still getting its 2%. That's what the bank wants. Well, what happens because you and the bank were expecting inflation, but we don't know what it's going to be a year from now. What happens if you and the bank are wrong and inflation is actually 6% instead of 5%? What does that mean? Okay, well, first off, wrong! You can't calculate inflation, ha ha ha. But second, who wins and who loses? Well, you as the borrower are still only required to pay $107,000. You pay back the interest, you pay back the principal on your loan, you're done. Inflation doesn't matter here for you. It just matters in terms of who wins and loses from this deal. But the bank still gets $107,000, but instead of earning $2,000 in real interest, they're now only earning $1,000 because real interest rate was 1%, which I get from the interest rate minus the inflation rate. And the inflation rate's now 6. So 7 minus 6, it's 1%, rather than it's expected 2% of, well, if there's the interest rate of 7% minus the infl uh, inflation rate expected of 5%. So they're actually getting $1,000 instead of $2,000, which means the bank loses a new win in this scenario because you only had to pay 1% interest instead of 2%. Hey, you won, because that other $5,000 doesn't matter. It's inflation, okay? You can buy the same amount of goods. Doesn't matter with the extra money. It's really the $1,000 that, you know, you're really giving up in interest here. So really, bank's loss is your gain. And if the opposite had been true, if the actual inflation rate had been 4% instead of 5%, your loss would have been the bank's gain, because the bank would have made $3,000 in real interest rather than the $2,000. So that's a lot to understand, but the, the, the main thing here is that the actual inflation rate is higher than the expected inflation rate. If the actual is higher than the expected, the, uh, then you win. The person who borrows from the bank wins. If the actual inflation rate is lower than the expected inflation rate, 
then the bank wins and you lose. That's what it's going to come down to on the quiz. So as long as you can understand that concept, and if you understand the process of it, you're good. But as long as you understand when the actual inflation rate's higher, you win. And when the actual inflation rate is lower, the bank wins, you'll be fine. Okay, we're moving on to one final little tidbit in history, actually. Because I teach history in my other classes. Don't get a chance to talk about it too much in econ, but let's talk about a little bit of history real quick. Let's talk about some examples of bad inflation in history. Really bad inflation. Let's start with Argentina, who experienced a 5,000% inflation in 1989, meaning the prices of your goods in one year went up by 5,000%. That's timesing a lot of money, right? So what happened was under this president, uh, public payrolls uh, swelled when government revenues remained stagnant. In 1989, only 30,000 people out of 30 million Argentinians paid any income tax. And that year, inflation reached 5,000%. It was so high that rather than supermarkets constantly updating their prices, they actually read out prices over the intercom. Like bananas are now... You know, $7 a pound. Bananas are now $7.10 a pound. Like, that's how constantly they were updating. It's crazy. Then there's a country that's no more, Yugoslavia, 1994. One of the reasons why they're no more is because their economy went in the toilet in the 90s. Between 1971 and 1991, uh, inflation in Yugoslavia went up by about 76%. So not the 5,000% of Argentina. But in 1991, it's discovered that a national bank issued $1.4 billion to the prime minister's account secretly. So basically just gave him a bunch of printed money. And in January 1994, the uh, monthly inflation rate was 313 million percent for one month. Oh my goodness. And then the, probably the worst example in history is in Hungary. No, it's not just that you haven't eaten. It's actually a country name. Stupid inflation in 1946. Yes, this is a one foreign bill. Uh, a, it's a 10 quadrillion pango note. With the new currency, the foreign, it came out. It was equal to 400 million quadrillion pangos. So the previous currency was so undervalued that one of these was equal to that many of the former currency. It's the reason why was basically Hungary's coming out of World War II and they came up with the bright idea of, you know how we're going to pay for all this stuff? We're going to print money to pay for everything. And that doesn't work. Inflation got so bad in Hungary that prices doubled every 15 hours. Every 15 hours. And that can add up really quickly in the course of a year, right? Because every 15 hours, you know, if something starts at a dollar and then goes to $2 the next day and $4 the next day, by the end of the month, you're looking at something that costs $1 at the, previous, at, at, at the beginning of the month, something costs $1,000 at the end of the month, thousands. And then by the next month, it's going to cost you millions. It's insane. So anyway, there's just some examples of uh, a bad inflation history. So that is the end of inflation. That's all the information you need. You can come see me in the Google Meets. If you have any questions that you need uh, help with on the quiz or any concepts that you need help with, get part one and part two of the quiz done. And then that's it for this week. Hope you all are doing well. I miss seeing you in class. Um, hope to see you in the Google Meets soon.